Inspired by the ocean, in this tutorial we continue to explore other creatures for our watercolor painting. I picked the seahorse because of its vibrant colors and cute appearances, as well as a good opportunity to play with the wet on wet technique, which we will mostly use to create magic today. Before we begin though, I would like to devote two minutes to color palette. We really won't use more than three colors today, and I'd like to start with the lightest one, which will be yellow. Then we will need blue. And this blue will have some hints of yellow as well, which we can mix together and achieve a nice and interesting green tone and the final color will be more uh, concentrated and dark blue in my case it's indian trend blue you can see the difference between these two and i will use it for finishing off the body of the seahorse to get some darker tone of blue i'll need to add the opposite color which is orange and it is orange because complementary colors are the best colors to create darker tones and as well calm down the color in question so if you want to take a blue and make it darker and as well calmer not so vibrant we need to add a complementary color which is on the opposite side of the color wheel and here we, we find orange. This is very important to understand uh, to achieve harmonious color combinations in your watercolor painting and using a color wheel like this one will really help you along the way. I already have my seahorse sketched out with the pencil and now I will use a kneadable razor to remove the pencil line that I don't need anymore. I need to make sure that my pencil line is uh, almost invisible so that when I apply my watercolor layers uh, the pencil stroke will not shine through the watercolor layer and we will only see nice and clear watercolors. So let's begin. I'd like to start with applying clean water everywhere on the body of our seahorse. As I mentioned earlier, we will use wet on wet technique. So I need to prepare my space for the watercolor layers to come. I'll start with the lightest color, yellow, and carefully introduce it on the head of our seahorse. Since we previously applied water, the paint is going to flow nicely and smoothly without any uh, barriers <laughs> or interceptions. Right up, I'll drop some of the blue and I'll just let the colors mingle. After that, I will continue painting with yellow, but only in in the front of the body of the seahorse. I feel that the paper is already getting dry pretty fast. So if you need to smooth out the edge, you can do so with your semi-wet brush. Right up, I am dropping some of the blue into my yellow and 
because blue plus yellow gives us green, we got this nice green tone with some of the yellow shining through. Now I'd like to add a stroke of more concentrated and clean blue color without much of yellow in it. And finally, I'll take Indian Trend Blue, remember the darker blue color that I mentioned earlier, and place it right at the edge on the right side of the body of our seahorse. However, I'm not going all the way to the edge because There, I would like to add tiny drops of orange. And remember I told you that orange is the color that is going to cool down and make blue darker, but also give, give, will give us a nice shining on the edge of the horse body. Which is also very curious because uh, actually the body of the seahorse uh, contains of the series of bony plates which are arranged into rings and because of those rings we have those kind of spikes on the spine of the seahorse and i am demonstrating those spikes as well with my orange color Here on the side you will see um, dorsal fin, the one that helps our seahorse to propel because they swim upright. And with the tiny drop of blue I'll just add some of the color to the fin. And you can see that I have a lot of water in my brush. And I allow the colors to mingle and do their thing by themselves without really controlling them much. And I just want water in the brush and water in the pigment to basically take over and create the textures on its own without me really uh, controlling it. I'm just basically directing it, showing where I want it to go, but I'm not forcing any particular detail. The same for our curvy tail. The tail also has rings. That's why we see those sharp edges. And also, by the time I get to the tail, the paper got dry. So I'll just put some clean water first to use wet on wet technique and then get a bit of orange then vibrant blue and finally the darkest blue
Now, while our layers are still wet, I would like to use a lifting technique where I take a brush, I put it into the jar with water, rinse it, so it's not dry, but it's also not dripping wet. And now carefully I will pick some of the pigment, lift it and remove it. To create those rings I was talking about to show every bony plate uh, how they are separated by the white uh, whiteness of the paper because I am removing the pigment. Sometimes it's pretty difficult to remove your uh, pigment because of the stainy features of your pigment. When you look at the um, uh, tube of your watercolor uh, into the description, manufacturer usually shows how stainy the color is, which means if it's going to go deep into the layers of your watercolor paper and stay there um, and that will make make it harder to remove the paint uh, because it's so staining that it stays really deep into the paper layers. Most of the time watercolors are not staining so it should be easy to remove it. If your layer is uh, too wet so for example you see here you have a little drop of uh, pigment hanging so it's clearly still very wet it's also going to be hard to remove the pigment because every time you will remove the pigment it's going to leak back in into this place and take over the space all over again so you might need to do this several times um, for many reasons, artists use this as a special technique because they achieve nice and soft transition. Uh, it really depends on the painting you're working on. Sometimes you need softer transitions, so you prefer to go back multiple times and remove the pigment multiple times. In our current situation, um, I don't mind having a bit more specific outline when you remove the pigment. So it's better to wait for the pigment to get more dry. So it will be easier. Now, since the head of the seahorse uh, is already pretty dry, I can use this moment to work on some of the details. For example, the area where the eye is. With the nice and pointy moves, I'm dropping some of the watery pigment over here and also leave some place kind of blank so I do not cover the whole space with nice and flat layer of blue. It's the opposite. I allow some of the yellow to shine through. This is going to give us a nice and playful feeling. in the watercolor painting. Now I'm adding the second layer and we know that watercolor is transparent, which allows us to play with layers and uh, layer them on top of each other while still seeing the first one shining through. So I can work on sort of little horns over here. And actually, they, they are called coronet. Mm. 
with some orange tone I can just extend the color a little bit down and with the semi wet brush I'm pulling it down so it looks more natural and organic can also add some of the textures here on the nose and to make it less sharp and standing out I'm diluting it with a semi wet brush Now I'll take a bit more concentrated blue on the tip of my brush and create other textures with dot-like moves. And uh, what I'm doing here, I actually want to follow the those uh, bony plates because they are arranged in rings. So I'm following the rings to uh, also show that this creature is three-dimensional because if I do not follow the rings, uh, the line will be straight, which will make uh, the seahorse look flat as well, like an illustration. With nice and careful dots, I am creating the textures. Sometimes I'm adding a bit of yellow into my blue to get green and use this green in the lightest area of the seahorse trunk. So we have a nice variety of tones. Here it looks like my tail got chopped off, <laughs> so carefully I will continue the line of the tail to show that it's still there, logically going around in a curve as well as here.
and again in the lighter area I will use a light green tone for the texture and as we go on the side where we used darker blue I also will take darker blue for the textures I feel like we can add more interesting, smaller uh, elements on the face. So there is not too much of empty space, especially around the eye. I'd like to add some of the yellow and I know that we always start from the lightest tone and go work it up and go to the darkest one but sometimes we can still add light tone into the painting and of course it's not gonna look clean as it would have if we just painted with it but it will kind of push the pigment away and create space for itself and like happen like it happened here with the yellow and also look more natural than just a pure yellow color if we would have painted it from the start And for now, I'll just give it a rest, wait until uh, the seahorse will get completely dry and do the lifting technique again, lifting some of the pigment in uh, uh, our rings between the bony plates to show the whiteness of the paper and we will be done. All right, I think my seahorse is ready now and I can continue with the lifting technique. Uh, it's better to use a flat brush like this one. Uh, it's going to be easier to create a nice and even stroke to lift the pigment. Mine is cut in the angle. It's not the requirement. Actually, in this case, it's not very comfortable to do so. But my other flat brush uh, is way too big for this paper. So <laughs> I need to use whatever I have. Also free up some space on top. And carefully with the edge of the brush, freeing up space around the head. You can still use, use this technique if you have a normal pointy brush. What's important is that when you're lifting your pigment, please do not uh, try to go into the same place many times when you do it. Because you're just going to pull the color back and forth and create even more dirt. You lift the pigment one time, so you do one stroke, then you wash your brush, rinse it so it doesn't bring extra water on your paper and do it again if you need more whiteness 
If not, just continue. You can also use your finger to control, for example, the direction or uh, if you have some bubble of uh, water. You don't need to lift the pigment all the way to the whiteness of the paper. Uh, it's enough to do just one time. If it's too white, it's going to look a bit odd. Also, sometimes you will create puddles of water, which I particularly not a fan, so I am trying to remove that. Here, where the pigment is very dark, it's a bit more complicated to uh, lift it. So I might need to go a couple of times. And also control the pigment around. And over here, I will free up some of the pigment. Also on uh, the dorsal fin, it's nice to show some of the textures as well. Also, I need to mention that we need to lift some of the pigment, not only following a horizontal line, but also vertical. This might be a little bit challenging, especially uh, using pointy brush, and especially over the pigment that is darker. You might just end up painting, <laughs> like bringing the color with you and sort of painting instead of lifting it. But do not worry about that, just uh, clean your brush, rinse it from the excessive water and go over again. Just make sure that your lines are very thin. And finally, if you have a white gel pen, you can finish off your painting with the final nice and light sparkling spots and details on your seahorse. However, working with the gel pen, there's always a risk of overdoing it. So make sure that you use your pan lightly and just a little bit and in a few places keeping it nice and organic
for example here on the fin would be a good opportunity to uh, mark the texture And of course, remember that your pen is going to work best on the dry painting, not on the wet one. So if your layers are still wet, it's better to wait a little. And this will be all for our cute little seahorse for today. I hope you enjoyed painting with me and I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next tutorial. Mm -hmm.